formula masses show up in just about every type of chemistry problem we're going to encounter. So let's take a quick look at formula masses and how to calculate them. First of all, let's just revisit atomic masses. Uh, when we're just dealing with an atomic species, it's pretty simple. We can just find it on the periodic table and look up that atomic mass on the periodic table. So here, for example, is beryllium. Beryllium has an atomic mass of 9.0122 on the periodic table that I used, and that's you know, AMU or grams per mole, depending on whether you're looking at microscale or macroscale. When we combine those individual atoms to form a ionic compound or molecule, it's really just a matter of adding up all the masses of the individual pieces to get us the overall mass of the formula. The place where we sometimes run into problems there is just starting with the correct formula. So keep an eye on that and you know always always pay special attention there. So let's look at a couple examples. So first of all, let's look at an ionic uh, formula. Ammonium sulfate. So I've got my formula for ammonium sulfate written here. Uh, sulfate is a negative two polyatomic ion. Ammonium is a positive one polyatomic ion, so I need two ammoniums for every sulfate. To find the formula mass here, let's just start by counting up all of the atoms that are in the formula. So we've got two nitrogens, and remember this two applies to both the hydrogen and the nitrogen here. So we've got two nitrogens, two times one. We've got eight hydrogens, two times four. We've got one sulfur and four oxygens in ammonium sulfate. Next, look up the periodic or look up the atomic masses on the periodic table. So I just went in and pulled these all off. Nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14.007, hydrogen 1.0079, sulfur 32.066, and oxygen is 15.999 AMU. Those again are just numbers right off the periodic table. And add them up. So if I've got two nitrogens at 14.007 each, they contribute 28.014. Same with the rest, just multiply these through and then add those together to get to a formula mass of 132.139 AMU. You see I rounded to the third decimal here because my inputs, third decimal, this one has four, this one has three, this one has three, because I've got one here with a third decimal. That means I have to round to that significant figure when I'm rounding my final answer. Now let me just step back here and re-emphasize the whole macro versus micro thing. Uh, for I don't know that I've ever seen a periodic table that had units on the masses that were listed because the mass really depends what we're using it for. So that mass is either uh, on the micro scale, an atomic mass unit, if we're looking at the mass of one atom or one formula, or it's in grams per mole if we're looking at the mass of a macro, a macro scale sample. So we've got the same number, but depending on the units, it has slightly different meanings. Fortunately, it's a pretty straightforward switch between macro and micro there. So think about the problem, think about what the problem is asking for. Let's look at another quick example just to make sure we're all in the right place. This time let's look at a molecular formula. Um, so I wanted something a little bit more interesting, so I grabbed alanine. Alanine is one of the essential amino acids that make up the proteins in all living things. Uh, so here's a formula for alanine. And again, let's start by counting up all the atoms in the formula. I've got three carbons, one, two, three. I've got seven hydrogens, three, uh, four, five, six, seven hydrogens. I have one nitrogen and two oxygens. Same thing, look up those atomic masses. This time I'll do it in grams per mole. It's the same number off the periodic table. Multiply those across and add them up so we get to a molar mass of 89.093. Again, I'm rounding to the third decimal because my inputs uh, are limited to the third decimal. So where do we run into problems with molecular formulas or formula masses? And you know, it really is almost 
always. It's not that adding up the pieces is the hard part. It's that the formula is wrong. Make sure that you're looking at your polyatomics. Make sure that you're practicing balancing formulas and writing, uh, you know, writing formulas based on the names and the names based on the formula so you can go back and forth because for, you know, as I say here, 90% of the errors, but for 99 plus percent of people, once you get to a right formula, you can do the formula mass without any problem. The other thing I mentioned this back in uh, the ammonium sulfate example was keep an eye on superscripts or subscripts and superscripts. This subscript in aluminum nitrate applies to the entire nitrate unit. So this aluminum nitrate has three nitrogens and nine oxygens in it. The other thing, and this is you know, in some ways kind of a minor point, is just taking a look at those sig figs. Um, you know, I typically tell people use as many significant figures as your periodic table can give you. You can always throw things away later on if you don't need them, but you can't magically regenerate significant figures if you discarded them too early in the process. So make sure you're using as many as you've got available. So that's it. Go out there and get some practice and you'll be great at figuring out formula masses. Good luck.